Well, forget winding down. The NSA ramping up its controversial surveillance program may actually grow in the middle of all of these lawsuits. Turns out because of the lawsuits and the NSA just wants to keep the records around in case they're sued. FBN's Matt Welch uh, not buying any of that. What do you think? I think the NSA and our whole national surveillance superstructure has lost all claims on our benefit of the doubt. So if the NSA is saying in response to these lawsuits, we need to hold on to these records uh, for much longer periods of time and that kind of thing, my first instinct is to say they're trying to scare us. They're trying to say what this is what happens when you try to mess with our ability or to curtail our ability to collect data. We're going to collect more of it and keep it for longer. I don't know if that's true, but... At this point, what the paranoiacs were saying six years ago uh, has been exceeded, uh, we found out in this last year of, of Edward Snowden. So there's no reason to believe that they wouldn't politicize a lawsuit just as they will politicize everything that they can't outright hide and lie about. You know, I could even see an argument here for doing what they're doing and hanging on to it because they are going to be sued. In fact, they are being sued now. Sure. So you want to hang on to this stuff, say, we kept this because... But I never thought of what you just said, that it could also be a convenient threat. Well, as, as other people have been pointing out, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, you know, they started suing them in 2008. The ACLU has been hitting them with lawsuits whenever they can. They're only now in 2014, kind of the week after Rand Paul and FreedomWorks file a lawsuit against them. They're only now saying, well, now that means we have to hold on to these records for longer. It kind of smacks of it's a public relations uh, campaign more than it is uh, a records keeping thing. But, yeah, it could be completely legitimate. I'm just saying they have lost the benefit of the doubt. When James Clapper is looking in camera and lying about it and then, uh, you know, whether they're spying against U.S. citizens and then trying to say, well, I had to do it that way because otherwise you, people might get suspicious. When the president of the United States, when the attorneys general, the last couple, have all lied about these programs, we don't have any reason to believe what they say on their face value. And, you know, I, going on what they said in the beginning, that is even the president, when these first came to light, that he didn't know a lot of this stuff was going on, then me thinks that these spies are running amok and doing their own thing. Now, I'm not saying that that's a shadow government or any of that. I am saying, though, that if we think they're going to rein themselves in when we tell them, you better rein yourself in, and not even the most powerful man in the world knows what the heck they're doing, who's to say they'll do anything they're, they're being told to do? Exactly. Ever since World War II, ever since 1948, actually, national security became a reason for secrecy. So all that a military or a surveillance outfit had to say to cover its own behind was that, I'm sorry, this hits close to national security. We can't tell anybody about it. Can't tell the FISA court judge, can't tell the president, can't tell anybody about well, it. Would you actually believe that, that, that when, I, when, when I heard the president say, well, I was not aware, a lot, uh, paraphrasing it, that a lot of this was going on, that worries me in, in, in so far as the guy who knows we're all, uh, presumably the president knows everything that's going on, right? They're exposed to all of this stuff. And if he is unaware, then you do have an agency running amok. Of course, creating. you don't have anybody who's in charge. What, what is the NSA's budget? Quick, tell me. Yeah. You don't know. What is the CIA's budget? We don't know. So if there isn't, I mean, it's, it's basic understanding, especially conservative understanding of how stuff works, how government works. If there is nobody holding these people to account, of course they are going to abuse power, even if they're all the most noble human beings we've ever well, seen. Well, I tell you, as an aficionado of a lot of James Bond movies, <laughs> every time they tried to rein in that agency, right? Bond That's was true. still doing his thing. I know, and so, he didn't even qualify for the tests last time around. No, but it comment. snuck through, snuck through, and thank God, you know. Uh, but I'm just saying that... Uh, I don't think that's such fiction. It is not fiction. Uh, you have unaccountable organizations that uh, are incentivized just by the power structure to get grab ever more power because who is stopping them? What is the break? That's why what's happening right now is so important. The public is becoming the break. People like Justin Amash, people like Rand Paul, they, and a lot of Democrats, they are becoming the break. And it's very important when we can't trust these people anymore to say, hey, look, you have to justify what you're doing and tell us the truth for once. And until you do, we will cut back funding, we will cut back power. If need be, we will actually stop this organization from existing. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, Matt, by the way, uh, a part of the Troika, that is a great show, The Independence, they will put the fear of God into you. You'll go, <laughs> you know, you're going to bed and say, yeah, I'll have a little snack and all that. And then you'll just say, oh my God, I'm going to die. Uh, it is a such more a, optimistic than it's that. a phenomenal show because they actually, really, they make you think. They make you think. And there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you very much. All right.